The Little Mermaid is a very important film for Disney. The 80s weren't a great time for the company. They'd been struggling at the box office to where they were famously beaten out by the Care Bears movie. There were some cool films at this time, but the fact was if they didn't have a hit soon, they could probably go under. So they came together and decided to go back to their roots of adapting fairy tales. The Little Mermaid wasn't just the success they needed, but also ushered in the Disney Renaissance, which not only put Disney back on the map, but pretty much made them the industry standard when it came to animation. Unfortunately, those days are gone, and Disney is now in a rut of making soulless, live-action remake cash grabs off their beloved classics, with The Little Mermaid being the most recent. It was only a matter of time, although ironically, they don't seem to be interested in remaking films that could actually use a second chance like The Black Cauldron, the movie that the Care Bears beat. Instead, we're getting remakes of things like Moana. They couldn't even wait a decade. Oftentimes, Disney will use these remakes to fix what they perceive as problems with the original, or update them for modern audiences and political movements. For example, removing Captain Shang from Mulan because they thought it was inappropriate to have her love interest be a commanding officer and it'd be more in line with the Me Too movement to remove him. And this was also the case with The Little Mermaid. There were many articles where the cast and crew talked about the changes they made with this movie, like changing the lyrics to Kiss the Girl to reflect more on consent, or removing a verse from Poor Unfortunate Souls entirely, along with making changes to the characters. That way they could address the criticism that Ariel and Eric often receive. Things like they're only there to look pretty, and they're really shallow, and have no character, and Ariel's motivation revolved entirely around a man. They ended up removing a lot of lines Ariel had in an attempt to combat this, including really important lines that helped flesh out her character. I guess they thought the original had her fawning over Eric too much, so they cut most of that dialogue. One common criticism is that she changed her body for a man. However, people who say this tend to ignore this part here. I gotta see him again. Tonight, Scuttle knows where he lives. Ariel, um, I'll swim up to his castle. Then Flounder will splash around to get his attention, and then we'll go. Ariel never actually intended to change her body and become human to begin with. While she wanted to be a part of that world, she never actually expected she would become human. And all the people who say that she threw everything away for some guy she didn't even know, Ariel did want to get to know Eric, and she had every intention on talking to him. But her father's over-the-top actions and Ursula giving her a strict time limit changed things. And when Ursula did suggest that this, she questioned it, whether it was even possible, and the fact that if she did take this deal, she wouldn't be able to see her family again. If I become human, I'll never be with my father or sisters again. Oddly enough, this line is also cut out of the remake, which makes it look like she never thought about her family. I don't really understand their logic cutting out these really important lines, especially when they were trying to make Ariel look better. Halle Bailey has that quote saying the remake is more nuanced and it's all about what Ariel wants and herself, but ironically that kind of makes her sound selfish, which is one of the main criticisms lobbied against the original Ariel, and yet the original displayed concern when she realized that she wouldn't be with her family anymore and actually planned on getting to know Eric to begin with. It's like they got such tunnel vision trying to make Ariel a strong independent woman, they stumbled into the perceived pitfalls the original had. Emphasis on perceived. I do think the original is a lot more nuanced than people give it credit for. Another change they made is that Ariel has never actually been to the surface despite her obsession with it, and the first time she goes is when she notices the fireworks coming off of Eric's birthday barge, and her curiosity gets the best of her. Personally, I'm not a fan of this change. The original Ariel was so obsessed with the surface that she couldn't stay away. They could have had her cloud or stargazing or enjoying the sun, and we could have just had the scuttle scene from the original instead of having her talk underwater. They were only five feet from the surface anyway. I think doing so would have helped clear things up too. Like later in the film, she's able to use the Ares constellation to help Eric find out what her name is. But how does she know about constellations? She's probably never even seen the stars before, so it would have been cool if they had established this previously. On top of that, given how much they stress that her leaving the ocean wasn't all about a guy, only for her to leave the ocean for the first time just to check out him and his barge just seemed like a confusing choice in my opinion. Speaking of Eric, I don't really care for the way they handled his character. Ironic considering they specifically wanted to make him better than the original, claiming it was wooden and boring. But like with the movie as a whole, I think there was a lot of nuance with his character that they didn't really bring into the new one. They also changed some things which I didn't personally care for. Like when Ariel serenades him on the shore, they 
say that she's using her siren song and imply there's magic involved, and Ursula, Sebastian, and Eric all talk about how there's power in the siren's voice. Sirens and mermaids often get mixed up with each other in media, but as far as mythology goes, they are two separate cryptids, with sirens being more bird-like than fish-like, but still it implies that Ariel hypnotized him into feeling this way about her, instead of those feelings being natural. The original Eric was very loyal, being just as infatuated with Ariel as she was with him, and it's not surprising that marriage is on his mind considering how much he was being pressured by his kingdom, but here his mother is alive and she's ruling the kingdom, so getting him married off doesn't seem to be high on their priority list. In the original, after being pressured for so long, when he does find someone he's interested in, he's willing to fight for her. He's out looking for her on the beach, hoping he'll run into her again. When he finds Ariel, he thinks that she can't be the one who saved him because she can't talk, but he takes care of her and is very respectful while not pursuing her. Here he goes on about how infatuated he is with her and sings a song about it while sending every carriage he has out into the kingdom to look for her, but then when he meets Ariel, he admits to Grimsby that he forgot all about her, so as soon as he meets another pretty girl, he just forgets all about his dream girl, and he's way less reluctant to kiss her this time. The entire point of Kiss the Girl was to convince Eric to kiss her because he was so reluctant, but he didn't need to be because Ariel is his dream girl, plus the terms of Ursula's contract, of course. Here they changed the contract to where Ursula made it so whenever kissing is even mentioned, Ariel totally forgets what they're talking about. So now when Eric does lean in, she keeps pulling away from him, which is very ironic, because they said the original version of Kiss the Girl did not consider consent. So they changed the lyrics to have him ask for consent. But what's even the point if she keeps forgetting every time kissing is brought up? Him asking her will just lead to her mind going blank. She literally can't consent. So good job, Disney. They also changed the circumstances of Eric on the shipwreck. Originally, he was safely in the lifeboat, but then when he saw Max was still on board, he immediately went back for him, putting himself into harm's way just to save his friend. But that's not the case here. He just grabs Max and then tries to get off. This might seem like a minor change, but I think it says a lot about his character, that he's selfless and heroic, putting others over himself, even dogs. While in the live action version, it just doesn't hit the same. When Ariel's turned to a human, they aren't really close to shore, so she and the others have to swim for it, and they end up being picked up by a random fisherman's net. I also didn't realize that that's not a bra, that's a part of her body, so she ends up being totally naked on some random man's ship. In the original, it's just the animals, who are all innocent to the situation, and Scuttle tells her to get dressed so she can fit in with humans. The fisherman is nice about it and he wraps her in a blanket, but still it just feels a little weird. He then brings her to the palace, but I'm not sure why. When Eric found her, he felt responsible for her, and where else would he bring her? But we never even see this man again. I wish they just kept Eric finding her. This was a really cute scene. While Ariel and Eric did share some cute moments in this film, I do feel like there's something lacking. Like in the original, when they were exploring the kingdom, Ariel was so excited to see everything that she would be dragging Eric along. To make sure that he can keep up with her, but here Ariel just wandered off multiple times on her own, and she didn't seem that concerned whether Eric was there or not, despite the fact that he was the one showing her around to begin with. Originally she was happy to share this with him, but here it doesn't seem like she really cares if he's there or not. I understand that they were going for Ariel being her own person and not being defined by a crush and stuff like that, but I feel like maybe they worried a little too much about that. They did have some pretty good chemistry, like the scene in Eric's treasure room is pretty good. Ariel's able to show him things about the items he has that he never knew, and Eric shows her maps and gives her other information about the surface world, so the scene works pretty well overall. But I do feel like they made Eric a little too much of an Ariel clone, since while they played up his fascination with the sea, they seem to have taken away his other hobbies, like he's no longer a musician, and he's never shown playing the flute, and he has to sneak around his mom to go out, just like how Ariel has to sneak around her dad, which I don't think was necessary. While I like the things they added, I don't see why they had to take things away from him too. Eric in this version is not a prince by blood. He was discovered after a shipwreck when he was a baby, and the king and queen took him in as their own. But the king has since passed away, leaving his mother to rule the kingdom. Although she seems a bit complacent in my opinion, the island was once a prosperous nation, however it's since fallen off, with the queen seeming more concerned with the amount of shipwrecks they've had than trading with other nations. Humans also hate merfolk in this version. In the original, the movie opens with them singing Fathoms Below, going on about the majesty of the ocean, and telling stories about merfolk and King Triton. But here it opens with them trying to spear a dolphin because they mistook it for a mermaid, which they insist on killing on sight, which is way less fun. The queen seems to blame the shipwrecks they've had on the merfolk, which is ironic because there's a scene where the sisters complain about all the shipwrecks. The queen also says the erosion their island is experiencing
missing is the ocean reclaiming what's theirs. I don't know, it just kind of feels like she's not doing anything to actually improve her kingdom. She can't just let the island sink into the ocean, can she? What about trade? Eric seems to be the only person that doesn't actually believe anything about the merfolk and is concerned about the future of their island, which is kind of sad, especially considering the fact that he's so obsessed with the ocean that he collects a bunch of stuff from it. At least he's trying to do something for the kingdom. That has to count for something. I'm not sure why they still included Vanessa, especially after Ursula included Amnesia into the contract. It felt like they included some things just because they were in the original, and they were only included out of obligation, but then they changed other things just because they thought they were fixing them. Here when Vanessa shows up, she again uses Ariel's siren song to try to hypnotize Eric. However, this time, instead of being fully hypnotized to the point where he's not aware of anything around him, it seems more like the power of suggestion. They also changed it to be just an engagement party, which could be easily called off, so everything is way lower stakes than the original. Instead of brainwashing and marrying Eric so she could have total control of his kingdom, and then using Ariel to get to her father so she can get her hands on the Triton, it's all just an engagement party. How exciting. I guess they don't want to rush into marriage? But that was kind of the point for Ursula. Then instead of the animals coming in to fight Ursula while she's trying to steal Ariel's man, Ariel comes in as a cat fight with Vanessa, and her voice is just represented by this floating blue speck. It was pretty underwhelming compared to the shining gold light from the original. Ursula herself felt kind of off in a way. In this version, they made it so that she's King Triton's sister, which was something that they were toying around with in the original, but ultimately decided to scrap it. Admittedly, I think having her related to Triton kind of raises more questions than answers. First of all, why is she an octopus when the rest of her family are part fish? First, the daughters are all different races, and they don't bother explain why, like with Eric being adopted, but now their aunt is an octopus? Okay. But her being Triton's sister doesn't really add much to the story anyway. It's pretty much only brought up a couple of times, but has little to no bearing on the story itself. You think she could've used that as a way to manipulate Ariel? Like say that she wants to reconnect after all this time, but things more or less play out like they did originally, minus that verse of poor unfortunate souls. Although this version of Ursula doesn't turn her victims into little seaweed monster things. Instead, she straight up kills them, which I honestly think is not in character for her. Ursula is the type to keep her victims as a trophy so she can gloat, but instead she just kills King Triton, as if she wouldn't keep him alive just to rub it in. In the end, the Trident is able to bring him back to life, but if the Trident can resurrect people, doesn't that mean it could bring back Ariel's mother? What's up with that? So the climax more or less plays out like it did before, but with Ariel being the one to ultimately impale Ursula instead of Eric, Eric mostly spends the fight tangled up in some ropes and basically being useless. But he throws a harpoon at Ursula, so there's that. Now, I already did a whole video about why I think this change to the ending was a mistake, so I don't want to go too much into it. But since Ariel's still the one to kill Flotsam and Jetsam, I really don't see why Ursula is targeting Eric. She has no reason to. It just feels like they were desperate to keep Ariel from looking like some kind of damsel in distress. Even though she's been a hero this whole movie, you don't have to be a hero all the time, and you're not lesser for needing help. Seriously, Disney, it's not that big of a deal. Then after Ursula's dead, instead of washing up on shore, Eric is stuck in the middle of the water, clinging to some wreckage. But the trident falls into the ocean, so Ariel has to choose between him or the trident. She chooses the trident. How romantic. I guess it's not that surprising they would have her choose that way. They need to prove that she's a strong, independent woman. But he could drown. So Trident's brought back to life and thanks Ariel for fighting for him. And she has to tell him that Eric was there too, since, you know, he was dead and he missed the whole thing. Which is not as impactful. So Eric swims back to shore and he sounds pretty desperate to get back out there, calling for a boat. But then his mother tells him that their worlds were never meant to be together. And basically to let her go, which he symbolically does by letting her blue ruffle dress drift into the sea. This was kind of sad, honestly. I know their love story isn't quite over yet, but instead of getting a triumphant Ariel rising out of the ocean, wearing that sparkly dress, he gets told to just let her go. In fact, a few days pass before Triton actually turns her into a human, and she meets up with him again on land, and then they go off to see the world together. But the pacing for the ending is really off. First, the queen says they can't be together, and then the next time we see her, she says that there have been misunderstandings between their worlds. It feels way too abrupt, and honestly, this ending doesn't quite feel earned because of the pacing. I'm not sure why they chose to wait a few days before they had her return to land. Was it to prove she really, really wanted to go on land? We already knew that. While this movie ends up being like 90% a retread of what we already got before, the changes they made were really noticeable. For all their talk about how they were going 
going to improve the original, I can't help but feel like the changes they made ultimately hindered the story. It hurts the pacing, it hurts the romance, it makes things really muddled. I'd honestly rather they spent $250 million making a new story instead of retreading old ground. And maybe don't worry so much about the haters, because trying to fix something that isn't broken just ended up exasperating the problem they were trying to fix to begin with. Personally, I think people are getting tired of these live action remakes. They used to be pretty easy money for Disney, but that hasn't been the case for the last few remakes, especially having to go up against a juggernaut like Spider-Verse. Though I'm not sure when Disney's going to get the memo about this, since they still have plenty of remakes in the works. Who knows if it'll actually work out for them in the end, but that's just my opinion. What do you guys think? Are you getting tired of these remakes, or do you still enjoy them? Let me know in the comments below, I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching everybody, I really appreciate it. Before I go, I want to give a shout out to our members, Stutania, Tyrant Carnivore, Shiny Orc Boy, The Rabbit Mancer, General Bolivar, Depth Charge Media, Samru163, Gabby Hime, Verdant Range, JVR, Hussyman42, Nixel, Bill C, Taylor Ramirez, Caleb Nelson, Bandito Bane, Dakari the Professor, Equestron, Norman Sweet Cream, Way Beyond Coincidence, Garcia XV Legend, Hunter Rose, Dash Hound, 80s Nostalgia Guy, Butcher 7 Actual, Felix Bam, Soundboy 00, Owen Wildish, Player Zero, Kitsune Fiora, Lucas Geist, Data Dine Executive, J Draws, Ninja Rex, and Blue Spirit. Thank you all so much for your support. If you want to become a member, you can hit the join button next to the subscribe button. You can also support the channel by leaving a like on this video and subscribing. It helps us out a lot and it's free. We also have Buy Me Coffee if you want to support us that way, and a link to that will be in the description. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye everyone! Thank <laughs> you.